Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be talking a little bit about Linux Mint. Now, Linux Mint has a tendency to put their foot in their mouth. It, they have foot and mouth syndrome a lot. Uh, last year they got into a big brouhaha with Canonical over the Chromium Snap. They've gone back and forth over whether or not Linux Mint even wants to exist. Like their de main developer has written many times, or at least a couple times, over how he's, you know, sick and tired of the distro and may not want to develop it anymore. Uh, and, and that has put people up in arms because people really like Linux, Linux Mint. And Linux Mint is a good distro. I have my own problems with it. Uh, I think they should have focus issues. But those are all beside the point. This time, the matter is updates. They came out in their most recent blog, blog post, or in a recent blog post, and said this. Now, this is from It's Foss. I have the actual blog post up here, and I'll link to it in the video description. But I just thought I would read this out here because there's one word here, and I've already highlighted it, you know. But in some cases, the update manager will be able to remind you to apply updates. Not a big deal. All update managers remind you to apply updates. Uh, Pac Man has a, a, a thing called Pemac that actually runs in the background. Uh, has a demon that runs in the background and reminds you of updates. Ubuntu's reminds you of updates. Uh, they have a nag bar that comes out to even LTS users to remind them to update, to upgrade. Not a big deal. So, so far, so good. In a few of them, it might even insist this is where they're going to get in trouble. trouble. This is where they've caused a lot of uh, internet angst. Uh, because the word insist usually means they're not going to take no for an answer. Insist has meaning. <laughs> it only really has one meaning. You can't, you know, find some other meaning for it to mean something else. It mean, usually means we're going to insist you do these updates and uh, we're going to keep insisting until you do the updates and there's no way to say no. That's usually what insist means. And not usually, that is what insist means. Uh, we don't want it to be dumb or get in your way, though. So you're already walking it back a little bit. It's here to help. If you are handling things your way, it will detect smart patterns and usages. So basically, if you are already updating, it's not going to nag you as much as it would other people, I guess. It will also be configurable and let you change the way it's set up. So that last sentence, it may is usually the sentence that has been ignored by other Linux media outlets because th there's been a ton of headlines saying Linux Mint is going to force you to upgrade and this one, you know, this one here is Linux Mint is going to force you to upgrade just like Windows. I could see how you'd say that because the word insist has meaning. Remember, it has one specific meaning. <laughs> it doesn't have any other meanings. <laughs> the sentence here, it will also be configurable and let you change the way it's set up, usually means that they're going to allow you to turn this off. So. Usually when it comes to updates, everything in terms of their naggable things that allow them to send you updates and notifications, those things are all turned on by default. That's standard practice across all Linux distros. You can turn them off. That's also standard practice. And it looks like it's going to be the case here. You can turn this off. But because of the way they've phrased it, they've used that word insist. They've caused a lot of drama that is completely unnecessary because of that one word. They've basically said, we're going to force you to update. We're not going to take no for an answer because, again, that's what insist means. And, yeah, we're going to allow you to turn it off, but maybe we're not. It gets even more complicated than this because they created this brouhaha with this blog post here. And then they had to go through and change, you know, they had to go through and write another blog post or something that they've sent out to some media outlets here. This is from Clem. He's the main developer on Linux Mint. I'm going to read this out because I want people to hear this and wonder just what the hell he's talking about. Because <laughs> all you had to do was come out and say... No, we're not going to force people to update. We want people to update as much as possible. Therefore, we've created a system that is going to persist and uh, 
nag, I guess. Nag, I mean, there'd be another word that they could use that's nicer than nag. But they're going to consistently uh, notify users of updates. And you can turn this off or whatever. I mean, obviously, they could put it in some kind of PR, you know, spiel or whatever. But that's not what they did here. They've muddied the waters. Many users think that users should be applied but don't do it often, either because they haven't gotten around to automate the process, or they thought they'd do it often but they don't, or for some reason, or for some, they even got used to that little orange dot in their system tray and don't really pay attention to it anymore. Given these users, giving these users a reminder after a while is something they might appreciate they're the people we're doing this for. So basically, this this paragraph here is just saying there are people who don't update. We're going to start nagging them to update. Again, not a problem with that. Every distribution does that. I don't. I mean, I'm pretty sure Linux Mint already does that. Uh, I mean, because it's. I mean, of course they do. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> They do. I'm sure they do. Some users don't update because they decide not to. Some of them need to. Some of them don't need to. Maybe they're offline or running limited functionality in safe environments. These are usually corporate customers. Some of them don't want to by choice, which is kind of repeating the first sentence, but okay. Some of them take updates at particular moments and in particular condition. For instance, on a critical production, you don't apply the updates randomly. You do so when you're fully ready and available. Reminding someone who already knows he's not interested just leads to frustration. So we don't want to target users like this. This is the first bone of contention I have with them. They're, what he's talking about here is they've decided that they're going to somehow come up with a system that determines what kind of user you are. How they're going to do that, they haven't said. Maybe they don't know themselves. Whatever. How, where they're going to get that information, I don't know. I mean, it's really weird, really vague, uh, maybe a little creepy, because there's going to be some kind of demon on your computer that's paying attention to when you update, and if you don't update often enough or whatever, it should just n nag you. And... You know, if that was the way it was, you know, fine, whatever. If you haven't updated in a while, it gives you a notification. But this makes it feel like it's somehow monitor monitoring you and paying attention to your patterns and they're going to try to do some kind of AI bullshit or whatever. It's weird and it gets weirder. Some users don't update because it's not them who install their or maintain their OS. Basically gives a... Uh, an example of installing on a, on a dad's computer, whatever. Anyway, the bottom line is this. We know we have very different groups of users. We know tuning the software too much for one particular group can antagonize the others. We're doing this for that first group of people. First of all, what first group of people? Oh, the he's when he says that he's talking about the first group of people he mentioned up here, the people who are... Um, who don't think to do it very often, I guess, is what he's talking about here. Uh, and we'll obviously also ha have everyone in mind. You can't please everyone, Clem. You just can't. Uh, first, the update manager will try to assess what kind of user you are. Creepy. Because before it reminds you of this, it will want to know whether or not you're likely to want to be reminded. How are you going to figure that out? I want to know. Everyone wants to know. It's a little creepy. Uh, second, like anything else that is useful to some but potentially annoying to others, you will be able to configure things the way you want. At last, again, they saved the best part for the last sentence. <laughs> no matter what they do, no matter what magic they put in the background to try to determine what kind of user you are, which again is weird, they buried the lead in fixing their PR problem. Their PR problem was... We're going to insist you do updates. That was their PR problem. The solution to fixing that PR problem is, well, yeah, we're going to nag you more often to do updates, but we're going to allow you to turn this off if you don't want to. You can make the choice, just like you can on every other Linux distribution. That was how you fix it. That's how you get away from the weird PR mess that they managed to always get themselves in. Instead, he spent four paragraphs here talking about... <laughs> 
why people don't want to do updates and different scenarios about why they wouldn't want to do updates and then explaining some very vague solution they've come up with to determine whether or not you're the kind of person who wants to do updates or not. And then, very last sentence, they fixed the problem. The PR problem. It's just so weird. Linux Mint has some issues. <laughs> I like Linux Mint more than I used to. Uh, after my first video, I could, in my first video about Linux Mint, I called it a useless distro. I recanted that in my next video when I actually reviewed the damn thing, and I realized that the reason why Linux Mint exists is because of Cinnamon, the Cinnamon Desktop. Cinnamon Desktop is very, 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 very good. Uh, not for me, but I can understand if you're coming from Windows, you want something that looks like and feels like Windows. Cinnamon is a good option for that. There's not very many good options like that unless you're going to go into like something like Zoran or something. You, I mean, Ubuntu doesn't look anything like Windows. So, uh, you know, my solution, always solution was just use Ubuntu, but it doesn't look anything like Windows. So that's the reason why Cinnamon exists. That's why Linux Mint is perfectly fine to exist. I still think that they have a focus problem. They should probably focus on the Debian edition. I think that that's a better area for them to focus on. Uh, they also do some weird like outside of the box apps like a IPTV application that they've somehow decided to code that's really weird uh so i mean i have my own problems with linksmit but i think my biggest problem is their developers are, are weird <laughs> like i mean everybody's weird right i i'm not the the poster boy for normality <laughs> just no i mean i have harry potter things on the wall uh <laughs> i mean everyone has their quirks but I think somehow there's like a, a, a some kind of barrier between them being able to say what they want in a way that doesn't piss a whole bunch of people off. Don't use that word insist. It it's insist implies force, it implies not taking no for an answer, and they use the word, and that's what pissed people off. And then in their walkback statement. They made it worse. They went through and and just pushed out babble at you. Like, it was like maybe, what, 500 words or something? Maybe not even that of what? I mean, I don't even know. I mean, they're talking about some kind of system that they're setting up, but they had exactly one sentence in there that fixed the problem. <laughs> like, we're going to allow you to turn this off. That's how you fix it. And that's the way it should be. I mean, there's other allies that have no problems whatsoever with this um, very weird announcement. Anyways, that's just, I just, a lot of times I don't cover news, but this one I felt like I had to get out there and cover it because Linux Mint is not going to force you to do updates. It's not. No matter what kind of weird system they come up with to determine whether or not they should nag you to do updates, they're not going to force you to do updates. They can't. Okay. I mean, I suppose technically they could just turn on automatic updates by default. That'd piss a lot of people off, but you could still go in and turn that off. That's an option. I mean, it's an easy option to, you know, do. So they're not going to force you to do this. I mean, like I said, even if they went through and turned on automatic updates, you could still turn that off. And you could just then you could just use your system the way you want to do it. That's the Linux way. Their problem comes in in communicating how they're going to move forward and try to get more people to update their systems. The way they did it was just weird. So, with all that, I mean, let's just move on to the the social, shall we? Uh, follow us on Twitter, twitter.com slash linuxcast, facebook.com slash linuxcast. You can also support us by subscribing to the channel, hitting the notification icon bell, or by going to patreon.com slash linuxcast, where you'll find all sorts of different perks, depending on what tier you choose to support us as. Tier 2 and 3 uh, patrons will get early access to our podcast, and coming up very soon, you'll get early access to all of our videos, uh, outside of these news ones, obviously, because I like to post those right to the YouTube channel. But you can get all those perks by going to patreon.com slash linuxcast. And I'd like to thank our current patrons, Devon C. and Marcus B. I call these producers, but... I mean, that's just because that's what YouTubers call patrons. But anyways, thanks, fellas. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I'll see you next time.